Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the new moon gathering of the meditation for the common good. Today and in this month, we work with the energies of Capricorn. And as we are in proximity of the new moon, we come together to bring thought forms, to bring our impressions, ideas, to focus them in this thought form and meditate, empowering them, becoming radiant for humanity to inspire and lead in the work of transformation and transition to the new Aquarian civilization. As we follow the movement of our planet around our star, sun, we work with the energies of three crosses. And as Capricorn is part of the cardinal cross, we bring our focus in this cycle to the theme of cleaning the house of politics and religion. This is one of the preconditions that's been voiced for successful reappearance of the Christ and externalization of the hierarchy. And therefore, as we focus our group thoughts on the common good, we follow those conditions to inspire and lead humanity. And in this cycle, the topic that was focused and synthesized by the subjective support group, our custodians of the purpose, connecting with higher purpose, laying the foundation of the Aquarian civilization. We meditated on this topic during the full moon of Capricorn, of the, uh, the last days of the full moon of uh, Sagittarius, as we entered the cycle of Capricorn. And we've been holding this topic in our focus for two weeks. And today, we work with this topic in the center of our group. Connecting with higher purpose, laying the foundation of the Aquarian civilization. And I invite Rebecca to sound the, to share our foundation principles for our work, what leads and inspires us in this project. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. That's such a nice um, definition of purpose, the thing that leads and inspires us. So our purpose in this project the meditation for the common good is all about supporting the manifestation of the spiritual plan for the planet through our group meditation work. And in our meditation work, we have the intention to focus our group intention for the common well being of humanity, for the common good of Earth's overall planetary life. We're aiming to enable recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles 
in all fields of human life and activity. And we are also aiming to magnetize thought forms of solution that support practical actions that can lead to the advancement of humanity in connection and harmony with the plan for our planet. And as we come together, we're aware that our group intent can focus our consciousness to the point where it can be pleasing to the spiritual world and um, bring a response from the spiritual world, um, which will help us to be inspired to say things that build up the conversation beyond what any one individual can achieve to a different higher level. So as we prepare um, to come together in alignment through the naming circle, we align with the sign of Capricorn, the ambitious goat climbing to the mountain top through effort and strain and struggle undergoing the strenuous tests of discipleship and initiation, becoming the spiritually focused one-pointed unicorn, meeting the light supernal, absorbing it, and turning back to suffering humanity to radiate the light forth in service for the elevation of human suffering for evolutionary purposes. And as we move into the naming circle, let's just take a few moments of silence as we start to see the three meditation questions in our consciousness. So they can be present as we come together in alignment for our sharing of impressions further on. So our questions again are, how can we assist the evolution of our institutions towards connection with higher purpose? What purpose does government and religion serve in implementing the plan? And how can government and religion serve humanity in the planet. So as we begin to ponder and hold these questions in our group heart and in our group mental field, I'll hand over to Tracy to lead us as we come together in the naming circle. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and our heart center of the group gathered today, as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. 
Hello, Alexander. And uh, <clears throat> Katja Kaufman. We are in Brooklyn. Welcome, Rebecca. Hello, it's Rebecca on the east coast of Australia. Welcome, Alice. Hello, I'm Alice from Portugal. Welcome, Andrea. Hello everyone, this is Andrea from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Welcome, Angelica. This is Angelica calling from London. Welcome, Aneta. This is Aneta calling from Denmark. Welcome, Bernard. Bernard coming from uh, France. Welcome, Danielle. Daniel, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Danielle. Darcy. Hello, everyone. This is Darcy calling from Washington, D.C. area. Welcome. Dit. Hi, they did from Denmark. Welcome, Julian. Hello, Julian from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Graciela. Uh, this is Graciela from Vancouver Island, Victoria. Welcome, Helen. Hello, and this is Helen from England, and I'm liking hearing we have a few people from the UK today, which is great. Yes, welcome. Jeffrey. Hi, this is Jeffrey from Minnesota, the US. Welcome. Josette. Hello, this is Josette from France, near Strasbourg. Welcome, Kiki. Hello, Kiki from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome, Lucina. Welcome, Lucina. Lynn. Hello, uh, this is Lynn. Um, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Welcome. Maria Christine. Maria Christine. Maria Christina from the Arizona Sonora Desert near the border of Mexico, USA. Welcome. Martin. Calling in from Châtelet, Belgium. Sorry. Welcome. Miro. Hi, everyone. My name is Miro Rado Savljevic. I am from Postojna, Slovenia. Welcome. Anne Burr. 
Hi, this is Nisa from San Bernardino, California, USA. Welcome. Rosita. Hello, this is Rosita from Sussex in England. Welcome. Millis. Hello, this is Emelsi from uh, Quebec, Canada. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. So we hold our focus on the higher good of all. And as we work with the energies of Capricorn, which keynote is in, lo in light supernal, lost am I. And yet I turn my back. So we invite us to share our impressions and thoughts on how the higher purpose can lead and inspire us and our institutions and primarily government and religious leaders to inspire humanity and lead towards the new civilization. We invite anyone who would like to share 
any thoughts on the three questions that you can see on the screen to raise your hand and unmute yourself and share as if we were in the sitting in a circle maybe around the fire definitely now around the fire of our group heart So how can we assist the evolution of our institutions towards connecting with higher purpose? What purpose does government and religion serve in implementing the plan? How can government and religion serve humanity and the planet? The flow is open and ideas and impressions that will be shared, we will synthesize before going into meditation and we'll take them as seed thought for our meditative work. Hi, Nisa. I've been thinking for quite a while that there is no clear definition about what government is, what government's not an agreement about what we want government to be. I find myself when I listen to the news of a bunch of labels that I really personally don't understand. I'm in California, right wing, left wing. I really don't understand what, what all those labels are supposed to be. They tend to remove the conversation from being real, they seem to remove the humanity to keep labeling things and not have a, an agreed on what you're talking about. Maybe I just spent too much time meditating and not paying attention to the outer world. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, this is Melcy. I think I share um, your, your feelings. Because uh, as I go around in my mind, <laughs> sort of like to answer uh, one of the questions, um, I'm, 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 I'm lost because, uh, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Quebec and uh, this is confinement again, and this is the politics and the complacency of the people, yeah, including myself, <laughs> I believe sometimes. So I guess I, it's the way we see it, I suppose that we, I have to sort of kind of sort it out, you know, how do I choose to see uh, my reality here, government, religion, uh, establishments, uh, 
And the process, I think, is um, it's an internal one. Of course, this is what we're doing. And um, in the word that comes to me right now is, well, so the strength. Hmm. Um, to see a world that um, to see a world where where where, where we just feel free, uh, like um, I guess that's what I want to say mostly. Uh, So on my own strength and wanting to see what a beautiful world this would be if our institutions, the politicians, uh, the, the um, religion really serve the purpose of this planet, which is well, harmony, yeah. all things fair. I dare not even say <laughs> beauty because uh, I don't know. So anyway, I would say I will. I will stay with uh, our governments among their own um, way of being, as, as representing us as. With, with the strength and with the love that uh, uh, they are, we are. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Bernard, <coughs> the current uh, action of the government uh, is uh, like an uh, invitation, invitation to uh, uh, understand more deeply the real meaning of uh, freedom. And uh, we can uh, appreciate uh, what is a freedom when we have uh, less freedom. Um, hello, Maria Cristina here. Um, well, the initial thoughts that come to mind, government and religion each being very distinctive in a way, arenas, I do believe must connect through the very fundamentally speaking, the 10 seed groups that we know are active in different arenas of humanity. Government to me is, a, is like the bone structure, like Capricorn. And it's like the bony structure. Perhaps religion could be looked at as heart, the heart, the bones. And you need that right now, of course, as we know, we're in a state of incredible um, change, disillusion, and much fertile arenas that folks like ourselves who meditate I just wrote down one of the most important things we can provide is that link between the inner purpose that is manifesting outwardly through our lives here and keep us so that the higher and increase in the manifest. Um, Marie, so just buffling out. Can you keep your microphone uh, open? Oh, so. sorry. 
say it again? Okay. I, I, I would just ask, stop. I'll just say that, well, I'll just, one quote from the Tibetan is that all the various forms in the government will, after making an experiment, their great experiments and resultant contributions, proceed upon the way of enlightened rule by the illumined minds of the age. This development is certain and inevitable. I hope it hasn't been thwarted. He continues, the indications of this happening can be seen today by those who have the eyes to see and a developed inner vision. So somehow it is incumbent upon us to contribute to that bridging, that divine circulatory flow flowing into new possibilities. Government and religion serving humanity and the planet, our structure, our heartbeat. Thank you. Um, hello, this is Lynn again. Um, in, in my mind, um, we have to, to um, get very basic for a moment and say, what is the job that we expect a government to do? What is the actual job that we expect from um, religious institutions? And I think as far as government is concerned, it's um, um, we their job is to represent large numbers of people. Um, and that, of course, looks different in different places, and we all know that. Um, religion maybe is, again, uh, for large groups of people to um, um, do the same thing, in a sense, for the uh, our higher selves. Um, and I think VK is suggesting that there will be a time when uh, that separation maybe isn't necessary, but now it seems that religion is more inspirational, and um, but the government has to take care of a lot of basic, basic things, um, in in a practical sense as well as hopefully inspiring us to um, move forward and move on. Thank you. Hi, this is Tracy. Um, I've been doing a lot of pondering on this, on these questions. And what keeps coming back to me is something similar to what Lynn just uh, stated, um, that government and religion are polar opposites with sharing the same purpose. So um, that's what kept coming to me. Uh, and the question is, um, how can we help them to meet in the middle to fulfill the purpose? Um, government uh, is more on the material plane and the lower aspect, and the religion is more on the higher aspect and spiritual. So it's where spirit meets matter, and right in the middle is where the purpose of both come together. So. This is a native. I uh, am. Uh, I I agree with with what you said. Um, I have thought about a government. Is it is primarily a first ray thing, and religion a sixth ray. And uh, it is then colored uh, by each country's personality ray or soul ray. Um, um, for some countries, for, uh, it is the soul ray uh, which is coming through, but for the most parts, it is uh, still the personality ray. And it is colored how we see the government and religion in each country. It is not the same, but 
our expectation for the government is to be uh, the wise guide who, who um, create order and um, take us uh, as gentle as possible through all difficulties um, uh, by uh, giving the laws and um, treating all um, fair and and uh, right in in the country and religion is the sixth ray uh, giving hope and giving uh, the, the the big plan and the big uh, purpose um, um, and the big the big picture in 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 the in in life span and and solace uh, for uh, in in life and death, it is the the, the bigger, um, higher purpose uh, for 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 the people. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I see uh, this is Jeffrey from Minnesota. And uh, one way we can assist the evolution of those institutions is by um, the way they're structured um, and to remove the, uh, the self-interest that uh, is so attractive to uh, people of a more uh, personality-based um, uh, existence. And it creates a incentive for corruption and personal aggrandizement and um, personal power. Um, and uh, speaking in the U.S., uh, that is true both for our religious institutions and for our governmental institutions. And um, so, so the structures are an issue and then the people that make up the that, that fill the roles in the in the governments and in the the religious institutions um there uh it's in, it's important that we bring out the best and and to bring the best people into those institutions and look for ways structural ways or incentive ways to uh to um, fill those roles with the best individuals possible, and these these on a higher turn of the spiral, the the governments and the religious institutions um, can can serve humanity in uh, tremendous ways, and and many have been talked about already, but the, the ways to uh, guide us through our difficulties uh both spiritual difficulties and and uh material just difficulties to deal with our environments and, and all the problems that uh humanity is faced uh both government and religion can can um can lead they can hold up ideals and uh and help us to negotiate these um these difficult waters ahead and uh unfortunately they don't uh, at, at this point are not up to the task and uh so and that's why we're here i guess so thank you kiki here um yeah that was Great, Jeffrey. Uh, how can we assist in this evolution of the institutions? So what can we do if we're not the movers and shakers? So is it by, by um, aligning ourselves with the groups, our local groups, that do these projects? Um, how else can we 
we have to work towards it. And if we have to do it on a local level, if we're not in Congress, in the governing bodies at heads of institutions, we do it locally, do we? Question. Thanks. I think there's the key, um, a major key or a hinge point that um, is there for all of us, or at least many of us. Um, an idea that just came to me from listening to all of you folks. Um, I think what we call religion is actually a key point for activating a lot, um, thinking that in terms that um, our best hope is that um, one of our best hopes is that the churches become um, what they should be, become universal, um, acceptant, accepting of one another, recognizing one another as, as divine, um, interacting together. Uh, that would be truly an inspiration for many of the people who aren't, aren't seeing these connections on their own. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, and uh, I think when it comes to churches, what they bring and what they are being counted for, supposed to, <clears throat> is the counted for divine law. The same thing for the governments who supposedly need to work in uh, su supporting human law. And um, and I think that is the interaction of both parties in that regard, that it's all about the laws and principles that they anchor. And I think what we can do is just to <clears throat> support with our energy and in our meditation, those people in both institutions who work on the, on the side of the forces of light. Because if we support them there in their own term, will support others. So it's not a, just a general distribution, but um, directed distribution to those who are working and doing and serving others in that regard. It's Rebecca here. Um, I have three thoughts that are coming as the um, impressions and conversation is layering so richly. Um, the first one is about um, the idea of the functions of religion and politics and how they might live together or come together or feed each other. And I'm relating that to um, our sheaths, our bodies, um, and wondering if um, there's sort of a correspondence between um, the function of politics and the physical body. Um, so that, that, that function is about providing a structure and means for the expression of higher purpose. Um, and that different, I was really, <clears throat> excuse me, interested in the mention of the rays because um, um, as has been sort of pointed to at the moment, politics and religion, politics, well, politics especially, is um, focused on quite strongly, it's functioning in, in a way of power and control, which is very first ray. Um, and in a way, it would be 
wonderful if more sixth and second ray could come into our political structures. And um, yeah, I'm just interested that the that the those ray qualities can be expressed in different ray, ways through religion and politics. Um, so yeah, the first thought, just the idea of that these bodies, so so maybe religion relates more to our our higher manas quality of um, connecting us with something higher, and that and that the the politics is providing the body for the expression of that. Um, the second thought that's coming is um, when there was mention at, right at the beginning of um, these labels of right wing and left wing and the way that um, our political system runs at the moment. Um, from out of that has come this idea of, we have the importance of working in group um, very much before us with the Aquarian energies coming in. And so these parties are, are groups but they are formed in a very Piscean way and very structured. And I'm wondering if part of um, the structure that, um, or the new way that government could begin to do things is to actually have more flexible um, group working so that there weren't um, necessarily parties that people had to adhere to, but different principles um, and different viewpoints on particular principles that um, were um, laid down as, as the principles were the important thing or the, the um, issues were the important thing rather than the parties and that people could then, there could be discussion, ways of discussion kind of like what we're doing, but creating um, forums where people are free to follow their alignment on those particular issues and not have to be locked into a party view of that. So that then the discussion about the issues becomes alive and people can take different viewpoints and um, come together in within this governance structure in um, more flexible ways that allow the kind of layering that we have here um, so that solutions are not based on power but based on the bringing together of ideas and how they can, how those ideas can best be um, synthesised for the best outcome on that particular issue. Um, and that brings me to the idea of the structures that Jeffrey mentioned, um, because at the moment we do have structures that encourage people who want power um, and personal um, gain to to take up roles in politics. Um, and so it seems like we really do need to disincentivize the structures from the power side and move towards the service and um, heart-centered side. So that might be about taking away huge wages, um, it, it, huge pay packets. Um, it might be um, about creating um, an idea around what government is um, that is not about power, that highlights service. Um, and so therefore leadership becomes service. And in terms of how these structures might be developed, um, which was being asked before, I think that what we're doing and this idea of working in community, I, I agree with that question. I think that 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 do we work in community is um, a very important question and that I, I think yes we do and that 
um, all these things that we do, like this, even this work now, is creating prototypes in the etheric for new ways of um, relationship in humanity. And that relationship um, needs to form the, an important foundation of um, how we have governance and how our po politics works. Been submitted. Um, I I agree uh, about uh, what you said, and I think uh, our political system is um, um, is very six ray um, uh, formed about uh, groups, uh, left wing or right wing or what you call it. I I don't know very much about politics uh, but uh, I, I I find it also uh, very confusing but basically it, it is groups uh, who think uh, the same way who is forming groups and in some countries uh, they are so first ray focused that the government uh, party is is uh, so pressing all the opposition so they have all the power and no one can say something against it. Uh, um, in, in other uh, countries uh, um, like uh, uh, perhaps America, you have one party who is winning the election and they are sort of, as I, in, in my view, um, controlling all the government uh, and and uh, getting a, as much through uh, uh, the law uh, the law as they can uh, without bothering to to uh, negotiate so much with the, the party that it has lost and the next election when it is the opposite then they do the same and they they uh, cancel some of the uh, the the work the, the previous government has made. It, it is a very six ray um, a, a way to to think. Uh, either you are with me or you are against me. But I think we are uh, coming towards the seventh ray um, more. Um, uh, thinking about um, working to uh, to to uh, corporate co um, work together the two sides of of the government uh, in in Denmark to, for instance we we have um, also parties and sometimes some of the um, uh, politics uh, po politicians uh, are uh, um, don't want to. They have problems in in the 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 group, and then then they stand alone. But that, then they can't get uh, uh, their meaning through in the government. They don't have power if they go. That they don't. Um, they are not in in a group or a party, uh, and it is difficult. But I think in in Denmark we are um, seventh ray and. This is a second ray country, and we are uh, very good on negotiate um, uh, on both sides. We have often um, minority uh, governments who are bound to um, cooperate with as many parties as as possible to get the law through. I think that is something that is. Um, um, we will see more in the future because the seventh ray is coming more and more through. So that that is, uh, I think, a, a um, transition period where we have to um, negotiate uh, much more than before in in the in government. 
Um, I hope you understand my, my poor English. Uh, thank you. Beautiful, Annette. Yeah, your English is uh, very good, so don't worry about it. Thank you. I think you had very good English. I was marveling at what you were saying, and it just let me think for a moment that we we fixate on on our global governments right now in terms of those that have the most power and the largest and it may mean that we look to countries and to governments that are smaller and that actually lead by example that that we that that the world will turn to those governments that are showing in their smaller opportunity to 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 govern that there is room for cooperation, that there is room for discussion, that competition and debate can be set aside. Um, and it just, you reminded me of that, just that, you know, Denmark may be one of the countries that inspire and influence and lead us all. And I have a quick reminder about what DK says about the types of governments. He says there are three types of governments. They each work on first, second, and third ray. They're not supposed to <clears throat> uh, be swapped one for another, so there will be only one type, but they're supposed to be developing relations and function, you know, up, 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 of the uh, level of service within that way uh, and they're supposed to connect be connected with one another and create that flow between the first second and third this uh, flow of energy mm -hmm. thank you I think many nations need to ensure that their voting system is fair because there are still many countries where people don't get allowed to vote in one way or another. And even in the UK, there's been talk about people having to have ID in order to vote. Well, it sounds good in theory, but in practice, it might mean that a lot of people will, who have the right to vote will be barred from doing so and I think also that um, governments and religion possibly need to have the feminine aspect not necessarily a female but the feminine aspect of people more to the fore because so far it has been the very one male aspect that has uh, ruled government and uh, religion and now it would be nice to have the um, balancing with more feminine aspect in it. Thank you. I wonder, um... Um, and I'm asking this as a question, um, is the UN a good example that could be looked to um, by individual countries?
I think it's actually a very good reminder um, about the changing rheology uh, of the world, about the coming uh, fourth ray. And the UN is uh, on the fourth ray, as we know. And in a way, and again, like UN is very complex uh, institution. Uh, there is no one UN. There is, we can say, several different UNs. And if we look in the U uh, UN as General Assembly, yes, it's based on the uh, principle of. Uh, uh, consensus and so it's the uh, and majority and uh, in a way governments they are called to become those equalizers of different views and uh, bringing harmony out of different, often opposite views. And also it's, uh, I think as we reflect on this topic, it's important to remember that we are uh, living in transition time and so many things are changing and including that humanity itself uh, undergoes big transformations, sh shifting from solar plexus to heart center and therefore governments that will emerge in societies where heart focus become predominant will be very different and what we call the new religion, the new world religion that will emerge in the, and already emerging as a result of this heart reorientation and reorientation towards own soul. It's very different religion. And the function of that, again, so cult religion will be very different. And yet, for quite some time, those systems probably will be functioning in parallel. There will be, and they are already, the people who are on the different evolutionary uh, stages, and therefore they, the, 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 the optimal government structures and religious structures for them will, uh, are different. And in a way, the exercise, what we are doing now, we are trying to envision in that new institutions, how they would work in that new world. And yet, there will this quite a long time of transition that is ahead of us. This is Annette. I, I think we are also um, moving from a more masculine government to a more feminine government uh, from a, the sixth ray to the seventh ray. Uh, not that it necessarily should be all feminine now, but we are seeing uh, in Scandinavia, uh, for instance, uh, many female uh, primaries, pr prime ministers in Denmark, for instance, we have the second female uh, prime minister uh, uh, now, and and in in all the other Scandinavian countries, as there has also been 
uh, female uh, prime ministers. Uh, we see also New Zealand has also a, a very strong female um, prime minister, and uh, they will uh, uh, hopefully uh, get a more um, balanced um, uh, view of government um, than before. Not necessarily better, but but a more balanced uh, um, uh, view, so that uh, there are more uh, balance between between uh, female uh, and masculine uh, um, um, problems uh, in 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 uh, and, and ways to to solve to to solve the problems um, in a more um, balanced way and i guess uh, we we can see the same uh, in in religion um when when we are uh, uh, becoming a more more um world religion more um um religion for for uh, um for the whole the whole world, uh, more seventh ray in, instead of the sixth ray. So um, I think it's it's a, it's a change and it it's a change for the better now. Thank you. And I think that the example that is set by the United Nations, even just in the manifestation of the, the intention to create a global space in which to have some degree of cooperation and communication, just the intention of that is, is very much like the United Religions Initiative, which is an international group that is also bridging differences between people of all beliefs. And I think that some of those just seedlings of, of intention will grow. And it's everything starts as a seed. And as we all know, there's an enormous patience that we have to hold on to in, in this evolution towards, towards the divine plan manifesting on the earth but it's those tiny seeds that are going to grow and, and be nurtured that will bring it to its fruition. Considering the time flow, I suggest we have now a minute of silence. And uh, before we go into meditation, Rebecca, Tracy, and I, we will try to synthesize uh, seed thoughts that we will will invite the group to take into the meditation. So let's hold together this space of the group field, allowing all the shared impressions to synthesize and form into seats.
Rebecca Tracy, whenever you're ready. As we come together and begin to put our seed thoughts into the chalice, um, I would like to add this seed thought, please. Through illuminated minds, a higher form of heart-centered governance and religion will be seeded and become manifest as the purpose of these forms assist mankind and the planet in their evolution. Again, please. Through illuminated minds, a higher form of heart-centered governance and religion will be seated and become manifest as the purpose of these forms assist mankind and the planet in their evolution. Thank you, Tracy. We will be sounding now the seed thoughts and we will go into meditation following this. So we'll have uh, stay, stages of meditation. Rebecca? Seeds of the future growing in the soul, in the soil of transition. Structures aligning with purified intention to service. From power to service. From competition to collaboration. From masculine to feminine. Balancing opposites in the fulcrum of higher intent. Covenants is a wise guide to create order by, by giving laws and religion provides giving plans and purpose, providing big picture of life. So let us go now into meditation. We recognize ourselves as souls. linked in ethers with light of our minds and love of our hearts.
in the heart of our group will know and recognize the common goods of all and freedom as main guiding principles for the new civilization. We visualize the lighted beam of light in the center of our group. which links us to the ashrams of the masters. We recognize emerging rainbow bridge between humanity and the hierarchy. We extend alignment further to the center where the will of God is known, Shambhala. We see three great planetary centers coming into dynamic balance. Humanity, hierarchy, and Shambhala. We meditate on connection of human institutions to the higher purpose. and guidance by the plan.
we bring all the shared impressions through our conversation today into the group chalice. All ideas and thought forms that will help humanity in its transition to the new Aquarian civilization. We invoke the energy of Capricorn to magnetize and strengthen focused ideas and thoughts. We offer in the synthesized thoughts for our focused meditation. Tracy. Through our illuminated minds and heart centered goodness, the seeds will be planted and become manifest as government and religions change and become flexible to the needs of mankind and the planet. Structures aligning with purified intention to service. Balancing opposites in the fulcrum of higher intent. Structures aligning with purified intention to service. Balancing opposites in the fulcrum of higher intent.
governments as providers of structure and guidance for human societies. Religion is a giver of the vision of purpose, providing a big picture of life. Both supports manifestation of divine laws through human laws. We magnetize the thought forms of, with focused intention of our group, invoking the power of the hierarchy. And energy of Capricorn. We inwardly sound silent OM and release these thought forms into the mental field of humanity. to the focused group center with power of our intention we sound the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of God let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth <clears throat> From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. 
from the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, friends.